are starting division, and we're just going to practice the standard division algorithm today. Next class, we will add in decimals. But before we start dividing, I want you to review fact families, because that's going to come in handy when you are doing division. So I want you to do numbers 1, 2, and 3, and complete the fact family for each of those problems. This is something you learned in elementary school, and you should be very familiar with it. I'm giving you two minutes. Go for it. All right, does anybody else have any questions about the fact families? Good. Turn the page. Let's start on the next one. Mr. Moore? Hi. You guys, everyone should have out your markers or li um, highlighters or marking pencils, something to mark our text. Because as we're going through all of this, it's going to be very helpful if you understand the math vocabulary. One interesting thing in division, because we show division in different ways, you actually are going to see the pieces of the division problem in different areas depending on the format of how you are looking at it. So that's kind of what we're going through here, is showing you where the different pieces are based on the format it is shown in. So our first one. This is normally how we do long division. I take the number that I am dividing, my dividend, shown by the number I'm dividing it by, in other words, how many groups of this are there, and that gives me the quotient. The quotient is the answer to a division problem. Now, if I'm looking at it as a multiplication problem, we can actually use division terms in multiplication, and that's going to be the quotient times the divisor equals my dividend. I want to actually add one more with you guys that I didn't do last period, so hopefully my A4 kids are watching this. And that is doing it like a fraction. So if I have a fraction, I have my dividend, the number I'm dividing, over the divisor, equals my quotient. I'm going to add one more because a lot of times we use the division symbol when we are writing out a division problem. And in that case, we're going to have our dividend I added an, an extra ID in there. Our dividend divided by my divisor equals my quotient. So we give you guys a couple minutes to make sure you have all these written down. But these are the different formats you're going to see anytime we do a division problem. They all mean the same thing. You'll all come to the same answer, but you need to understand where each piece is. And this part here gets to our fact family, so I can either write it as a division problem or a multiplication problem. It's actually the exact same thing. That just gives us our fact family. But where the numbers are does make a difference. We do have the community of property of multiplication. Is everybody comfortable with that? Yes. Do we have a community of property of division? Oh, yes. No, we do not. You do not have a community of property of division. I have to do division in a certain order because my answer changes if I mess up the order. In multiplication, I can mess up the order, get the same answer. Cannot do that in division. Okay, does this make sense to everybody? Do you understand how we have it set up? Yeah. Okay, so that's all your different formats for writing out your division problems. Just understand what the terminology is as we're looking at the numbers. 
Okay, consider the expression of 48 divided by 6. John evaluated the expression using the following strategy. He said, I know 6 times 8 is 48, so if I look at my problem, 48 divided by 6, I know that that equals 8. Is that correct? Yes. Guys, there's a huge hint. They gave you the thumbs up. Okay? So, yes, we know it's correct. Uh, one other concept I probably should have highlighted this last class, too, but just in case anyone didn't know, multiplication and division are inverse operations. In other words, they kind of undo each other. That's why you had to write it differently. Here it says 6 times 8, right? Here it says 48 divided by 6. So they had to switch it around because they're inverse operations. So what strategy did John use to evaluate the expression? I think. Good, he used his fact family, right? And inverse operations. So he used the fact family and inverse operations. Quite frankly, a lot of kids struggle with division. Normally, if a kid is struggling with division and doesn't know what 48 divided by 6 is, I, I will encourage them to look at it the other way. So what times 6 would get me 48? There's your answer. Make sense? So if I don't know the division, think about it in terms of multiplication. For a lot of you, that's going to help. Okay, identify the dividend, the divisor, and the quotient in our statement. 48 divided by 6 equals 8. So which number is which? Which number is my dividend? Alina? 6 is the dividend? Oh, wait, no. This is how it sounds. This is the one you're dividing into. Dividend. Which one are you dividing into? Nathan? Well, we only have one option left, so the dividend is 48. <laughs> Meaning our divisor is... <laughs> Riker, that's got to be a brand new one, buddy. <laughs> Seven's not even on the board. What time is it? Seven and 45 seconds. I'm messaging Stephanie. <laughs> <laughs> His mom. Guys, what's my divisor? Six. That's the number of groups that's being put into, right? So my quotient is eight. Okay, which values in the statement, 48 divided by 6 equals 8, can you switch? And the statement is still true. In other words, I have to keep it as a division. What values could I switch and still keep it true? Good. So I can switch the 6 and 8, correct? Why? There's always logic to math. It's part of what makes it beautiful. But we just did something that told us this. Oh, Alina? Um, because, yeah, six, because six times seven equals 48. So even if you were to divide it by any of those numbers, you would still be accurate. OK, so you went from division to multiplication because they are a fact family, because they are in the same fact family. Okay, but can I switch the 6 and the 48? We have a commuter property multiplication, that would be fine, right? I can do 6 times 8 or 8 times 6, can't I? So why can't I do 48 divided by 6 or 6 divided by 48? Because we have a fraction. Okay? So, we do not have a commutative property of division. There isn't one. 
If I don't do it in the correct order, I get the wrong answer. Okay? So, we've done a lot of multiplication and addition so far. Realize there is no community property in division. Is John's strategy reasonable for evaluating any division expression? Can I use my fact family for any division expression and inverse operations? Yes. The only caveat I would throw, it's not going to work well if you have decimals or fractions. But for any whole numbers, his method works well. Is everybody comfortable with that, what we've done so far? Okay. It's just the idea that the fact families, if I'm doing the same numbers, I'm okay. See a few people are still writing, so I'll give you 30 seconds to finish writing this one. Really, guys, one of the biggest things is getting comfortable with the format in a division problem because without that commuter property of division, which we don't have, that means if I don't get the order right, I get the problem wrong. So in division, it's really critical that you have all the numbers lined up properly. Okay, let's go ahead and go to page 147. Ms. McShann hates this, so I'm going to cover this one too. Okay, if you don't know a fact family for a division problem, you can use other strategies to determine the quotient. So she's doing 34,098 divided by 6. And she's going to use what she's calling an organized estimation strategy. I've also heard this called partial products, partial quotients. True, because we're dividing, not multiplying. Okay? So it's kind of the same thing. How many of you are familiar with partial quotients? Okay, we got a, about a fourth of the kids. So for a lot of you guys, this should actually make really good sense. So the way this works, she starts at the left and says, well, okay, 6 isn't going to go into 3, or 30,000 uh, 30, exactly. So it's going to be, a, the closest I can get with 6 to 34,000 is going to be if I multiply by 5,000 to get 30,000. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So she's using the whole 5,000, 6 times 5,000 gave her 30,000. She takes it away and she gets 4,098. Then she says, okay, well, it's going to go into 4,000. I've got six. It's going to 4,000 probably about 600 times. So she does 600 times six and gets 3,600 and takes that away. So she's now multiplied this one. That was there. This one is here. And has 498 left. Then she goes, okay, I'm getting closer. It's going to go 498 about 80 times. So she put it up here, did 6 times uh, 80, it's 480. Subtracted, it got down to 18 and said, okay, no, now that's 3. Because 6 times 3 is 18. So does everybody see where her numbers came from? She just basically took it by places. She said, started at 34,000. The closest she get was 30,000. Then she said, okay, I got 4,000 left. I can do that 600, gives me 3,600. Then she said, okay, I'm still at 498. That gives me 80, so 480. That left her 18. She's like, oh, I know that one. That's 6 times 3. So now that she's got all the pieces to figure out what the actual answer is, she has to add all the pieces together. So 380, 600, and 500 gave her 5,683. So 6. Uh, 34,098 divided by 6 gives her 5,683. So guys, I'll be honest. To me, this is just a more difficult way to look at long division. Because if I look at this, what did she really do? Long division. She really said, okay, well, 34, I can go 5 times. That gives me 30. Right? Okay. Subtracted, got the 4, brought down the 0. So goes into 40 about six times, gave him 36. Subtract, he got a four, instead of, and then brought the nine down. So the nine just came down. Six goes into 49 about eight times. So subtract to 48, got a one. 
brought the eight down, and then did the three. So it's really just long division. She just did all the other zeros for the place values as she went. Make sense? Can everybody see what she did? So whether you want to keep track of all the place values as you're going, you can. That will get you the same answer. To me, this is just a really long, harder way to do what we would teach you to do anyway. Okay? So, in each step, why did Lori subtract after she determined each estimate? Well, do you subtract after you divide there? Anybody want to help her? What do you think, Nathan? Do what? To find out what? How much is left? Because she was estimating. She needed to find out how much was left. Does that make sense, guys? I mean, honestly, she's doing exactly what we do in long division. She's just including all the place values at each step, which you don't really have to do. But for those of you, again, a fourth of you are used to partial products. If you're used to that format, that just shows you how to use that format. Does, um, does what was her name? Lori. Lori's strategy makes sense to you guys now? Yeah. Any questions on it before we go to the next strategy? Kiana? Which part don't you understand? <laughs> okay, I can't go back through and explain the third time, but basically all it boils down to, she just took each place, and instead of just doing the 5 over the 34, she said it's in the thousands place, so it's actually 5,000. Then when she got to the 6, she said, okay, well, I'm now in the hundreds place, so I added, the, all she's doing is adding the zeros for the place she's in. Okay? The, the only advantage I could possibly see to this, guys, is because she's estimating, if she underestimated and could have gone up one more, when I do my follow-on math, it'll actually have the bigger number, so you'd be able to get one that you should have had previously. Let's go ahead and go to the next page, 148. Now we're going to talk about Rob and Morgan. Five. We know they're both correct because they both have thumbs ups. Yes? What they want you to do, I'll wait. What they want you to do is to compare them. How are they similar and how are they different? So go ahead and compare both of their strategies. Take a couple minutes to look at them and tell me how they are similar and how they are different. You have about two minutes and then we will talk about it. Who can tell me how Rob and Morgan's problems are similar? Um, they're similar because they kind of use like the same like, like that format thing. Where like, it's kind of like the same format. But it's not. Yeah, but like they use so the what is similar? They get the same quotient, yes? And they are different because one uses partial quotients. And one uses standard algorithm. Okay. 
Does everybody agree? Okay, let's look at the next problem. It says, Carnegie Middle conducted a month-long food and clothing drive to assist in disaster relief. They collected the following items for distribution. 13,312 cans of food, 9,472 blankets, 19,456 batteries, and 26,112 bottles of water. If the students want to make 256 disaster relief shipping crates, how many bottles of water will they put in each crate? So I want you to think about that and I want you to work out the problem and find the answer to figure out how many bottles of water they will put in each crate. Who can tell me what operation you think we're doing? We are dividing. So go ahead and use the information they gave you to find out how many bottles of water they will put in each crate. Go for it. Four. So what division problem am I working out, guys? 26,000 divided by... Can 256 go into two? 26. 261. How many times? Please speak correctly or don't speak at all. One minus six. Can't. Eleven minus six. Bring down my one into 51. Can it go? So I put a zero, bring down my two into 512. Can it go? How many times? It is two times. Guys, notice that every number in my house has an answer above it. That's how all division problems should be. You should never skip numbers or leave them without an answer. Got it? So they can pack, they can put 102 bottles of water in each crate. Any questions about that one? Good, let's look at the next page. Analyze Morgan and Dustin's solutions. What did Dustin do incorrectly on his problem? How could Dustin have checked his work to know that his answer was incorrect? And Dustin should have three digits in his quotient. How could he have determined that before he started dividing? So you are examining his problem and telling me what he did wrong and how he should have done it correctly. Answering A, B, and C. Any questions? Good. You have four minutes. Go for it. What did Dustin do incorrectly on his problem? Kai? He got both of those correct. His number placement and he didn't put a zero where he needed it. Guys, I don't know why the book did it this way, but it is not correct. You should always start your answer where you are in the problem. It cannot go into two. It cannot go into six. So your one should be there. It's driving me crazy. You should have an answer above every number in the problem. Make sense? This should be zero. This should be zero. This should be one. Got it? Does that make sense? So, we're not going to talk about the number placement because technically they both did that wrong. Dustin did not add a zero to the quotient when 256 could not go into 51. Any questions? So how could he have checked his work to make sure his answer was correct? So 
He could have multiplied 256 by, what did he get for his answer? 12 to see if it equaled, what was the first number? 26,112. That's how you check division. You use the multiplication problem from the fact family. Yes? And Dustin should have three digits in his quotient. How could he have determined that before he started dividing? Kaylee? He could have used estimation. Any questions? Yes? What'd you put? He could have determined there was three digits because he's dividing with three digits. Nope, not necessarily. All right, next page. So we're going back to the Carnegie Middle School's, not clothing drive, what was it? Just a relief drive. There we go. And using the numbers they gave you for each of these items, cans of food, blankets, and batteries, to see how many of each item will go into 256 shipping crates. So you are working out those three division problems using those numbers, and then we will come back and talk about it in about six minutes. Go for it. Let's up real quick, guys. Uh, excuse me. Now, we haven't really covered this, but if you're doing long division by a multi-digit number, it can actually be very beneficial, especially when I'm doing three problems with the same number, to build myself a cheat sheet. Cheat sheet. Watch how easy this is. So, yeah, during the test, absolutely during the test. Okay? Because all you have to do is build a multiples table. How many of you like to add numbers? Is that adding pretty easy? Raise your hand if you think adding is difficult. Okay? Because what am I doing? All I am doing, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and I'm adding 256 to each layer. So what's 256 plus 256? 512. And now that I've got that first one, I already have my reference because I'm going to add 256 now to each level to make the new one. So six and two is eight, six, seven, 14, 11, 12, 10, 10, eight, two, one, six, 13, four, five, 12, eight, nine, seven, eight, 14, nine, 10, 14, nine, 10, Three, you guys probably won't be quite as quick as I was on that one, but all you're doing is, <laughs> don't look on Ms. McShan's face, you guys should have seen it. Uh, but you should be able to add those numbers relatively quickly, yes? Yeah. And I'll be honest, if you have trouble adding those numbers, you're probably going to have even more difficulty multiplying them. So regardless of how fast it is for you, when I'm doing multi-digit division, Building a quick reference table like this will make it much easier, especially since we got three problems using the exact same number. So now let's go back to our problem. Cans of food, what was it? So I don't have to turn back. 13,312. Because now that I have my cheat sheet or my factors table or product table, multiples table, this is easy. Will 256 go into one? 13, 133, 1,331, five times. So you gotta just go on my table till I go over. It's the one right below it. So that's 1280. So let's track 1280. Gives me one, five. 512 is two. Is that hard? Now watch how easy this one is. What was our blankets? Blankets was. 9472. So divide by 256. We'll go into 9. 
94? 947. That's going to be three times. Subtract 768. Gives me 9. 7. 1,792. 37. What about the batteries? How many batteries? One nine four five six. One nine four five six. Divided by two fifty six. We'll go into one. Nope. Nineteen. One ninety four. Nineteen forty. One one thousand nine forty five. Will be a seven. One seven nine two. Gives me three. Five one five three six. Was that hard? Is it helpful to have a table? Yes. Was it hard to build a table? Just a little hint. Do you have to build the table? No, it's your option. But guys, our, our old curriculum was called Engage New York. I hated almost everything. That was actually like the one thing I was really like, you know what? That's actually really smart. Okay, let's go to 151. Here's our key on this one. When I am doing a division problem, Sometimes it doesn't come out evenly. Shocker, right? Here's the hard part. When it's a division problem, I have to understand what to do with what's left. So the remainder can mean different things in different situations. Sometimes you can ignore the remainder. Sometimes the remainder is the answer to the problem. Sometimes the answer is the number without the remainder. Sometimes you need to use the next whole number up from the correct answer. So... The Red Cross collected 3,551 winter coats to distribute to flood victims. Okay. There's 23 distribution centers. How many coats can be sent to each center? Marla's calculations are shown. Here's her calculations. I'll just give you a hint. She is right. If I divide 3,551 by 23, I will get 154 and 9 23rds. Marla said the Red Cross can send... 154 and 9 23 coats to each center. Master replied, you cannot have a fraction of a coat. So each center will receive 154 coats and there will be nine coats left over. Who's correct? Take about two minutes. Talk about it at your table. You guys need to come up with Marla. I will give you a hint. One of them is correct, Marla or Madison. Okay, let's take a vote. How many of you think that Marla is correct? Awesome. So you guys missed that I said her math was correct. How many of you think that Madison is correct? Why? Marla's math was correct. What? Sawyer? Good. I can't give a fraction of a quart. So Madison is correct. I can't give a fraction of a coat. Is it a coat then? But is it a coat then? If I rip it into shreds, that's what we call a rag. It means it doesn't have any use. Okay, because of time, we'll work this last one out together. Carnegie is hosting a picnic for a fifth grader who will be attending school next year as a sixth grader. They're planning for 125 students. Each fifth grader will get a sandwich, a drink, and a dessert. They're ordering large sandwiches that each serve eight people. If there was 125, how many sandwiches should they buy? So all I'm doing is 125 dividing by eight. That's going to go once. Subtract 8 gives me a 4. 45 is going to go 5 times. Subtract 40 gives me 5. 5 eighths. Can I order 5 eighths of a sandwich? No, so she needs 16. Don't forget, 20, you need to be in math yet at 24. So it's not she, they need. 
16 sandwiches. Good luck, guys. 